Catherine, the, the recent xenophobia attacks, I mean, I suppose it's the continuation of, of the horrific attacks that sort of uh, drew national worldwide attention in 2008. How did these recent attacks compare to the attacks in 2008? Well, if I may say, I think they even predate 2008. Mm -hmm. And the xenophobia issue has been a long-standing one in this country. And if you look at research that has been done on the topic, you will find out that the first or the earliest attacks were actually reported in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. And I think the issue has just, it, it's always been there. As you say, 2008 was a major eruption. This one perhaps smaller in scale in terms of the people affected, but you know, no less serious I, in my view. And I think it's just a reminder that this issue needs to be addressed and taken more seriously, um, and that it continues to take place. Sometimes a lot of incidents occur which are unreported, mm. um, which diverts attention from the issue. But I think it's a long-standing issue that needs to be tackled by different stakeholders to, to find a lasting solution. Okay. Now, of course, um, it's, it's a subject that you've researched thoroughly. What, in your interactions and the research you've done, what are the root causes of xenophobia in South Africa? Well, let me first start off by saying that there isn't one single cause, and th they are multiple. In my research, I actually found out at least 10, and there mm. could be more because this is a field that requires continuous inquiry. And if I may just group them, you have economic causes, and I think those are the ones that people tend to talk about a lot, the issue of jobs mm -hmm. and poverty. You also have social or what I call psychosocial causes where migrants are scapegoated for non-delivery by government officials, mm -hmm. and they're used in as, as an excuse for what's, whatever's not going right. You also have psychological or historical causes and you've also heard these being mentioned, such as, you know, South Africa was isolated from Africa for a long time, mm -hmm. and people therefore haven't had much engagement with the rest of the continent. Or you might hear people saying that some South Africans think of themselves as being exceptional to other Africans. Mm -hmm. And so that cluster of causes belongs into that category of historical or social causes. And then lastly, you have the political causes. and one of them is the micropolitics at local government level. And if you think about the recent attacks in Durban, there seems to be a, a level of organization behind them, which I suspect um, can be traced down to the local politics. And we saw that also in, in the areas that were affected in 2008. Mm -hmm. Another political aspect to it is, of course, the denialism um, of the government to even call these incidents as xenophobia. Mm -hmm. There's been a preference to, to, to use criminality as opposed to xenophobia. And that's a political issue as well as that of, um, you know, promoting a discourse which, which promotes xenophobia by, you know, making visitors or migrants not feel welcome in the country. So there's a public discourse as well that I would categorize as a political cause. So there are several, and um, like I said, it's a, it's a topic that still needs further inquiry. Mm -hmm. And the ones that I've shared with you actually explain different levels, community levels, and a phobia st state level. And so I think one needs to take a, a broader view rather than a, a narrow view when mm -hmm. looking at causes of xenophobia.